Do you think do you think you would look at our current situation differently if we had a a higher standard of play last year? Would you feel as confident as you are if one of the quarterbacks wasn't the third rated player in the entire country? Would you be as confident with two freshman quarterbacks? 45, 50, 45, 40, 35, 30, he's gonna go! Holy cow! Big red junkies. Game by game, game by game! He is better than best! 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 This has been a hot topic of conversation lately, and I just wanted to get your guys' opinion on the quarterback room. With the portal opening back up this week, we're going to go through a whole slew of more transfers, people that are figuring out. I was going to say, not just the quarterback room, but transfer portal. Transfer portal in general, yes, but... Specifically, look at the quarterback, the quarterback room, room because there's not a lot of other places on the team that people are talking about us needing more people. Yep. If you if you quickly identify them, what you'd say if there's another running back out there, might go get a little little more depth there. If there's another linebacker out there, I was going to say, say go, some secondary. Honestly, if you asked me who, I would say running back, inside linebacker. Okay. So running back, linebacker, maybe another tackle if we can go get another tackle, like a left tackle and specifically. Those are, but those are so hard to find. The, they, the they are, especially on the especially on the second half of the transfer sure, yeah, portal. Yeah. They're so much harder to find than even the first half. But at least they're, 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 good they're so heavy, they're so hard what, to move. Yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> but but exactly what you said. The ones that are good enough, they're, they're not. not gonna be they're there. not. They're not going to available in this round of right. the transfer portal. But but my my big question is. A lot of people are so, it almost seems like, I don't want to use the word freaked out, but I don't know of another way to put it, worried, concerned, freaked out about the fact that we only have three scholarship quarterbacks. Yep. I don't get it. I realized that we had to go deep last year because of our quarterback situation. A lot of the, the depth issues last year and the, the playing through injury stuff that they didn't necessarily make guys do was because they were playing poorly. I don't know that we would have had to get as deep as we did if Jeff Sims had been the Jeff Sims they thought they were getting and dealt with the injuries that he had. I, I think you're not entirely wrong as far as the only three quarterback uh, scholarship quarterbacks. Um, I think that, that is, is the obviously the bare minimum. Yes. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. But and it I, sounds like we have two other walk-on guys that are back there. I, I think the biggest reason why people are focused on the only three scholarship quarterbacks is because two of the three are true freshmen. That's you know, fair. if one of them was another experienced guy, like a junior, like Harburg is, then maybe people wouldn't be freaking out over only three scholarship like if we've quarterbacks. We've been able to keep a Purdy the situation. Yeah. I, I, I think it's, it, it's the number, but it's also the inexperience of that number. I, th- I think that's the main focus of yeah. why that number is so important. I mean, if you look at total game hours, it's a very small room. Uh, it's tiny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I get that, but if you look at total game hours heading into the last season, it was the exact same situation minus Jeff Sims. I was going to say, wait a second. Uh, Jeff it, Sims had a you, shit you ton can't of game minus, hours. But you can't minus a whole person yeah. when it's a room of four people. <laughs> Especially a whole person that started for three years. Yeah. <laughs> my, my other thought on it is, is it some... Fatigue left over from the fact that we used to carry six or seven scholarship quarterbacks. When did we carry six or seven scholarship uh, quarterbacks? Frost last year here, we had six. Did we really? What yeah. the fuck? Yeah, we had six. And he must have been high or something. Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> Woo! It's Coke joke. We're bringing- <laughs> hey, if you hey, like Coke wait jokes, to- wait subscribe. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh god! Winter's over, Matt. Stop talking about powder. We're not going skiing. Um, I don't talk about us. But no, I. It, it, I guess my thought on it, when I'm really just thinking about it, not from a Nebraska perspective, just from a football perspective in general. When you look at an NFL roster, typically you're only going to run with two, maybe three quarterbacks on your roster at any given time. That's not really I realize fair. it's a limited roster. Yeah, fifty-three that's... man roster. I I get that, but at the same time. It, this I'm, I've got a, got a bigger point okay. coming along here. At the same time, the main reason that you're able to do that is because in the NFL, you can go out and pick up a guy 
if you have to. Yeah. You can go get a guy midseason if you really, really need to. With the tremendous amount of guys getting in the portal, Jeff Sims is a great example. A guy who jumped in the portal doesn't have any place to go yet. There's a bunch of those dudes out there. There are over a thousand kids still sitting out in the portal from the first round of transfers that don't have any place to go, and most rosters are full right now. Yep. Those are the the cast offs, the ones that maybe bit off more than they could chew when they when they decided to go take their ball and go home or go elsewhere and don't have another place to land. But there's a lot of quarterbacks in there that are available. Yeah. And with the new rule that just came out and got official on Tuesday, the NCAA said it's unlimited transfers and it's instantly eligible. Now you basically have mid season free agency available. Yeah. So my question is is it really as important, like just thinking about specifically from that standpoint of if we're dire, like we're, we're five weeks in and all three of our scholarship quarterbacks have had season-ending injuries. If we're in dire straits like that, it's not like we have to run walk-on guys out there. We have the ability to go out in the portal and get a guy if we want to. Well, that has, Wait, wait not, what? Not when they get injured, we can't. Sure we can. No, we can't. No, what no. do you mean when we can't? If they get injured in the middle of the season, we can't just go get somebody. It's instant eligibility. No, that's not the. That's not the. No. How? Wow. What, what would be the rule to stop it? I didn't say that there was a rule against it. That's just not how college is. It's much different. No, I, I understand. It's not. That's gonna not. Be, it's not going to be a plug and play starter that, like no, going and picking up a backup off the the waiver wires in the NFL. That's not what I'm saying. The, but if if we were getting thin, if two guys got injured. And we needed to go pick somebody up, and they no. went and found a system, system s- similar guy. No, that you don't think they could bring him in. No, that's not co- that's not what college is. I know it's not what it is currently, but that's what we're moving. Towards. And the thing is, you, and also the thing is, th- there's not a rule against it in in as far as transferring, but there's a rule against it that because again, student athlete, not if you're a graduate. But <laughs> if you are, if you're a fifth or but sixth, you year, have to be Casey enrolled Thompson. at a certain time. Not if you're Casey Thompson. Yes, yes, you do because you have to be doing classes. You can't just in October just jump into a. No, that's not how it works. Well, you know, it was an idea. So no, it, that's not. <laughs> Where's your pipe or no pipe button? Uh, no. Do one of these instead. Pipe or no pipe. Until they get rid of the word student, that's not a thing. No. Fair enough. Because you st- again, you still have to be was- enrolled at a certain time. You have to have certain classes. Even if you're a graduate, you still have to be going to school. I want to look into this more because I feel like this is this is something that's going to open up the ability for a lot more of that. If they're if they're saying, "Hey, the transfers don't matter." Also, the guys that are available in October when you have a bunch of injuries, they're not good enough anyway. So, no, I'm not. I'm not even. I, I, I guess in my idea, the way that I would be looking at that is in a situation with like a Casey Thompson, who's going to be a guy who's sitting on a bench somewhere. In, in Oklahoma next year. In Oklahoma, who might not even be actually suiting up. No, he's not playing next year. Who might? He, he'll be healthy, but he's not playing over Jackson Arnold. No, no, so, no, no. no. Like, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not saying, I'm not saying starting. I'm just saying no, like, I, I don't even know if he's going to be suiting up as a backup. But there's a possibility that a guy like that that might be out there that's, that's a graduate that's sitting there waiting for an opportunity – might have his eye out there going, oh, look, Nebraska might have a quarterback opening. I'm going to go Because there's still school over. involved, there's, that's not a thing. Well, not until, fair enough. Not until they get rid of student. Sorry. Let's, I understand your point. And let's get that's them on great. There. But that's in, <laughs> until they get rid of the student thing, it, you have to be enrolled by a certain time, whether it's you know to uh, go through spring practices in January or before this, you know, school year starts in August or September or whatever else. You have to be enrolled at a certain time. You can't just jump in like that you're ruining all my fun Jay. sorry <laughs> just you know just do you guys do, what do you what do you guys think about the three quarterbacks going in like do you, do you really think that we're in a hard hard up spot where and i don't know anything about the two walk-on guys that we have in there but do you really think we're in a bad enough spot that we really need to go find a portal guy a and b do you think there's even going to be a portal guy that would be willing, who who would want to come in and compete in that spot I, I, I think that's kind of the question. Do do you think that we're going to go after a quarterback? And do you think that there's a quarterback available? Or, and I don't mean necessarily names or whatever else, because we don't really know. I mean, I know we saw before we started recording that, that Jaden Rashada from Arizona State, who's an absolute circus act. Um, and not in a good way, by the way, as far as the no. circus act. Uh, For the, if you don't remember, he was the guy that was 
promised the you know eight million dollar bag at Florida, yeah. and then realized that they didn't have it to give him, and so that he pulled his commitment and ran off to Arizona, Arizona State. State. Yeah, yeah. And now he's in the transfer portal. I want no part of him. And he but, didn't play at all, did he? Uh, I don't really. I don't. I didn't pay that close attention to Arizona State last year. Um, I mean, I think if he got on, it wasn't much as far as getting on the field. But I think that the and I will own this completely. I have. Uh, I have not been hating on Danny Kalen, but I have been hesitant on the hype of Danny Kalen for a very long time on this show specifically mm-hmm. and with you guys mm-hmm. privately. Uh, I think with the surge of how Danny Kalen has been practicing, um, I probably would have said that we will try to go after one before spring practice started, but with the way spring practice has been going and how well Danny Kalen has been playing, I really don't think that we're going to go after one. And they they seem to love him, man. Well, and and again, it's not just Danny Kalen. I said it before. Uh, it sounds like Heinrich Harburg was the best quarterback of the bunch last scrimmage. So you have you wonder why though. You you wonder what they mean by that because to this point, like even even in that last hype video that where they showed all three quarterbacks throwing the ball, and it was, it was a really cool hype video. He still had his arm angle was like yeah. slotted down for no reason. And it's. I'm not putting him on a pedestal. I'm just sure expressing what other people have said as far as how the scrimmage went. Um, and obviously, Dylan Rayola is Dylan Rayola. So when you have the three guys on, you know, on scholarship, whatever, just three main guys that are playing super, super well so far through spring practice, where does a another quarterback coming in late in the process, coming in in May, whenever or uh, July. You almost have June. to know he's just a fourth backup. Exactly. Or at best, he's probably number three. So, so realistically, somebody in the transfer portal. If you're in the transfer portal, you're going to want to play, or at least have an opportunity to. That's, that's your assumption. Do yeah. something. Uh, who's going to want to come here? In in that's what the group is in the quarterback room. Also, like who's really out there? I think we're good. Like yeah. I'm not I'm not saying like we're satisfied, but at the same time with what we have yeah, and the you, way that they're practicing. When you consider the fact that you also have those two non scholarship guys. I mean, yeah. The room is technically five. Which I don't I don't you're, know what you're not like said, it doesn't really matter because my point here is it, it you're not going to get somebody with much better talent than one of those two no. that wants to come in and be a fourth string anyway. Yeah. So here's here's my here's my last question question on that. Mentioned Jeff Sims a couple times. He hasn't found a landing spot. No. If you were no 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 hold on let me let me finish this out. <laughs> if if you were really hard pressed to say what's your what's your best opportunity in the portal like just looking at the quarterbacks that are out there right now. Yeah, I was doing that too. There's not a lot of guys that are out there that are available that are any better than something that I would expect to see out of a Jeff Sims. Nope. So. He's already, he already knows your system. He already knows your system expectations. He's already been through a full year of practice. He's familiar with all your coaches. He's familiar with all the language. He's familiar with the state and the people. Wouldn't he probably be the best guy to just bring back with him in the understanding that, dude, there's a good chance if you ever have to step foot on that field, you're going to get booed like a motherfucker. But if you want to come back and be our fourth scholarship guy, you're welcome to. Look at me. No. I- no. There are how many names on that list? A lot. Have all of them proven that they will drop the ball for no reason several times a game? <laughs> then fuck out of here. They're not the same person. I'm going to lie. I'm not going to lie. I have no idea. <laughs> it, it could be two times a game, and that's improvement. So, If, if we no. were having this conversation in January with the first round of Transfer Portal, I'd, say, I'd still say, and I said it then too, that we're, we will probably go after a quarterback. Yeah. With the way that it stands right now and how well the co- the three co- main quarterbacks are playing, at, again, spring practice, I'm not putting anybody on a pedestal, but just w- what we see so far, and that transfer portal quarterback coming in in June to start practice and everything else, I don't see, honestly, I don't see why a transfer portal quarterback would want to come into that situation. That's fair. It could be September 1st and our First three quarterbacks get injured, and I still don't think you go get Jeff Sims. Well, see, but here's the other thing, too, is from what I understand, if you've entered the transfer portal, Rule is still letting you come back and 
and be around the team and yeah. work out and practice and whatever. So I don't know if he is or isn't, but I don't know. Jeff Sims very well might be there going through stuff with them now. When he's stuff to be enrolled at the college? I think yeah. he is. Yeah. I mean, is he? he would have to be, but I don't know if he is. I, I'm not looking at uh, student enrollment. <laughs> We're no longer tracking it. <laughs> no. But no, I... I don't. I, I understand I, your question. Yeah, I, think it's no, it, I think it's an interesting. My thought. answer is fuck hell no. Well, it, and the the that. other point is is that when two of those three scholarship quarterbacks are true freshmen, you know, if there's a guy in the transfer portal, and I'm just going to bring up his name, I don't want him specifically, but like a Jaden Rashada, who was a freshman last year, clearly redshirted, all that stuff, a young guy, basically, is what I'm trying to say. If he wants to transfer into Nebraska and maybe sit a year and then have a potential to play and or start the following year, I would understand it. But literally two of our scholarship quarterbacks, two of our three scholarship quarterbacks are true freshmen. Yeah, It's not like they're seniors and juniors and a guy can come in and maybe compete. No. And one of them is most likely going to redshirt. Yeah. Well, yes, but still, it's like, why would even as a young person, you want to come in and compete with other the same age group as you are. See, I think it almost has to be more of a uh, a, a Casey Thompson type person that you know, a, a graduate or somebody that's in a fifth or sixth year that they know full well they probably don't have a starting opportunity. But they anywhere. don't want to come in and be third string. Yeah, or any of those. That's why I'm saying I just don't know if I. I don't think that it's an option for us, and I don't think it's an option for them. Yes, yeah. yeah. very well could be correct. And I understand being nervous about it, but personally, I'm good with where we are. I'm not nervous about it. I, I don't know if you guys got that from my NFL analogy. I'm not nervous about it at all. I I got that from your wanting 17 scholarship quarterbacks or whatever it was that Scott Frost had. I, I am still nervous that two of them are true freshmen, but it's not like I'm so nervous that I'm like, oh my God, we got to do something. It's just the fact that there are two of the three guys are true freshmen and just through the history of football, having true freshman starting quarterbacks. Would you feel different? It is a, I don't want to say crapshoot. That might be a little aggressive, but it is a gamble. Do you it think just is. Do you think you'd feel different about it if last year you had seen better quarterback play that was gone now? Like if, if let's, let's say that Jeff Sims was a senior last year and he actually had a good season. And now he's gone, and, and the quarterback play was at a better level. Because, I mean, really, to me, the way that I look at it, and this is what makes me more comfortable with the idea of there being two true freshmen out of those three scholarship guys, is the fact that it's almost as if there can't get any worse production from the quarterback position than what we got last year. I that's th- that's really, I'll knock on wood, because that's really, really bad to say, but... We were really down in the dumps from yep. quarterback play. Do you think? Do you think you would look at our current situation differently if we had a a higher standard of play last year? You're not entirely wrong, but I, and I hate doing this, but I will almost answer your question with a qu- question. Bastard. <laughs> would you Would you feel as confident as you are if one of the quarterbacks wasn't the third? rated player in the entire country, a five-star quarterback that is supposed to be a can't-miss guy. Would you be as confident with two freshman quarterbacks? No, I wouldn't be as confident, no. So I, I, mean, it's, I, I Honestly, to, to pile on with that, having two Elite 11 quarterbacks. Yeah. I remember, you know, when, when we had, what's his name, uh, Mike Riley was brought him in here, and he wound up going to a couple different places, Oregon State and then uh, out to Ohio State. Uh, Tristan Jebby. Yeah. He was the last elite 11 guy that we had come in and he never, you know, we never had him here long enough to see anything out of him. But, but that's the last time we had a quarterback recruit that I was really excited about mm-hmm. and feeling like, okay, you've got one of these elite 11 guys in, we've got two of them. Mm-hmm. And the one that's the lesser rating, not the guy you're talking about, beat him out in one of the competitions and is talked about as, you know, some sort of a, Albert Einstein level IQ football genius doesn't have the physical talents of the number one recruit in the country, but has all the other stuff to go along with it and already sounds like a fucking coach on the podium. Those sorts of things that like that type of natural born leadership, whether you're 18, 17 and a freshman or you're 21, 22, 23 and a senior 
when you can talk like that, when you can com- command a room like that, and you're already probably not the most talented person in that room, that gives me a lot of confidence. So, and again, so basically what I'm trying to say, it's a little bit of six of one, half dozen of the other. Like To, you- to, to answer your question directly... No, I would not be as confident if if it wasn't for Dylan Raiola and Danny Kalen. And I wouldn't be as nervous if we didn't have some of the worst quarterbacks in the country <laughs> last year. So, again, it's it's kind of a little bit of both. Yeah. Like, if we didn't have two Elite 11 quarterbacks, you wouldn't feel as confident. Yeah. If our quarterbacks weren't as atrocious as they were last year, I wouldn't be as... Wor- you know, it's just kind of... How, however you want to look at it. and If Harburg was a starter that I actually wanted to come back and start, yeah. and there was a good possibility he was probably going to get beat out by a freshman, that would make me feel way fucking more comfortable than what I feel right now. But at the same time, as Matt restarts his <laughs> Mac over here, I bet. <laughs> Mute that fucking thing. Uh, but at the same time, I, I, I really don't think that I'm uncomfortable with the three that we have. I don't, like I said, for the fourth or fifth time, I don't know anything about the two walk-on guys. Probably should have done a little research on them, but yeah, honestly, I don't think they matter. No, no. I, I mean, the the chances of us. I mean, credit knock on wood again. Uh, the chances of us needing a fourth string quarterback are slim. And and honestly, it, it doesn't matter who you are across the entire country. If you get to your fourth string quarterback, you're fucked. Like, it. You could be Georgia. You could be Alabama. With Nick Saban, you could be anybody. If you're at, if you get to your fourth string quarterback, you're screwed. But third so, string, you might win an A. True. If you're Ohio, Ohio State. State, yeah. <laughs> like, so, I All mean, right. to try to be sit here and be like, well, we need a fourth string guy. No, you don't. like that. Everybody's screwed if you get to your fourth string guy. I think another thing that makes me a little bit more comfortable with what we have, especially from the freshman standpoint, is the experience on the offensive line. Mm-hmm. If this was heading into last year and we were dealing with this. And we were thinking the same thing we thought coming into last year about our offensive line. Ooh, no. No, 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 no. So we, we kind of said this at the beginning, get, kind of getting away from the quarterback stuff. Matt, you didn't really chime in. Do, would you, if it was outside of quarterback, what kind of position would you think that, like, should we go after in a. I mean, I think you guys nailed it. The running backs and linebackers, sure. I, again, I don't think it's necessarily needed. Yeah, it's more of a nice to have type of thing. I I feel kind of weird saying we don't need anybody because we're still an under five hundred team that hasn't been to a bowl game in six years, and it's like I trust that to this point really, they've done a good job. The expectations are where the expectations are, though. Like we are expected by everybody, including national writers, including all these Vegas odds makers and things like that. Most of them are saying they feel like the line of seven and a half wins for us. Like that's that's a low number for a lot of people, national people. I'm not I'm not talking about Nebraska media because I think actually this is one of the better year off seasons. Most national that I people can, I hear think that that number is perfect, not not low. But I, I'm hearing eight or nine is where it should be. It is is where the over should be. So yes, if it's eight, that's okay. correct. But when you when you're when you're hearing local people still saying whoa 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 because usually. You know, the Nebraska media, the Nebraska fishbowl is the ultimate hype yep. generator. And this year it feels like everybody's like, hey guys, like let's calm down a little bit, keep the expectations down. But you're getting, you know, it doesn't help that rule's so good on camera talking because he's getting the attention of the Pat McAfee's of the you know, the busting with the boy I realize Compton's a Nebraska guy, but having those types of things happening and putting Nebraska as a name out there as much as he has it's it's getting all this hype and this expectation, this excitement boiling outside of our walls, which is an interesting phenomenon. I, I, I did want to, just speaking of the transfer portal in general and players and whatever else, I did want to kind of read this tweet that I saw the other day uh, from Bud Elliott. He's 24-7 sports, uh, one of the big-time national uh, recruiting guys. He also is part of the Cover 3 podcast podcast. It's a great podcast for college football fans, by the way. We've referenced them a couple times on here. I, I do, because I listen to them all the time. But uh, it was That's really... Like Danny Cannell. Danny it, Cannell, yeah. which, who I hate, Danny Cannell. I love, <laughs> I love whenever he doesn't do the show, but whatever. I like all the other guys. Tom Fernelli, who's a Big Ten guy. He's an Illinois guy, but he's a Big Ten guy. Um, and Chris, uh, Chris Patterson. Um but he said, t- just talking about the transfer portal stuff, he said, a handy guide to deciphering tweets about the transfer portal. 
if they highlight a guy's career stats and not the stats from the most recent season, high chance he's an accumulator and not an impact player. Watch out for snap count, which includes special teams, as opposed to snaps played on defense or offense. Same goes for games played as opposed to games started. If they highlight the high school, the high high school rating, and he has been out of high school for two years, good chance he's a bust at that level. If the if they mention a player was preseason All American pick and don't say anything about what he did in that season, chances are he he got hurt or he sucked. If a player has had flashes of production and is about to be on his third or fourth school, good chance he is a huge pain in the ass off the field and coaches are tired of his act. So that's kind of just, you know, anybody that's looking at the transfer portal and some of these guys that, you know, hell, a Caden Proctor, for instance, where he is jumping back and forth, or a Bear Alexander who transferred from Georgia to USC and now is rumored to possibly be in the transfer portal, possibly not. Now, as soon as they rumored that he was in the transfer portal, he came out and was like, what are you, no, t- no, what no, are you guys no, talking that's, about? That's not true. That's not true. Or a Jaden Rashada that we were talking about, the quarterback from Arizona State. And, like, you get some of these guys, you just have to kind of pay attention. Like, yeah, you might be a high-profile guy, a high-star guy, whatever. But if you're moving around a lot or you're getting hyped up by your high school stats or, you know preseason stuff but you didn't do sh- and nobody says anything what you actually did during the season like maybe come on now maybe back off as far as the hype goes with a guy that had i mean hell we we watched the Deion sanders thing earlier where the word potential and he's a like, potential yeah exactly so you know especially this second round of transfer portal guys you have to be very weary on a lot of those guys because th- they've gone through spring practice and they're trying to just be like Okay, I see the writing on the wall. I got to bounce. Right. Well, and at no point, I don't think we were talking about anybody we thought would be starting. No. In no. this show. So it's more about, we know injuries happen. Comfort is nice. And, th- and that's kind of the thing, like, again, moving away from quarterbacks as far as bringing in for Nebraska, it's very weird for me to say that we don't need anybody. And I don't really mean that as the literal verbiage of what I'm saying, but I I just believe in how this program is being built and the development of this program yes. and what these coaches are trying to do. <clears throat> that yes, I do think that we could use a running back. I think we could use an inside linebacker. But outside of that, like there might be positions that we could use, but at the same time, will it disrupt what we're building? Bringing in a guy this late in what we're trying to do. I don't I don't think you add anybody at this point in the season. I don't think you add anybody that you expect to be a starter for you next year or an impact player for you this coming year. I think that if you're going to add somebody, it's going to like, I could see like, I'm just looking through while you, while you've been talking, I've been looking through the list of running backs that are available. Mm-hmm. There's some, actually some pretty freaking good guys out here. Um, some good, like you got a penny Boone out of uh, Louisville. He's actually got an upgraded rating over his high school rating. He's a senior. He's six two two twenty five. And the dude's got a ninety three point five four rating on on three. He's a he's a big body dude that you could see come in as and say, okay, cool. Well, there's this adds one extra layer of depth in a room where you really feel like you've got at least three guys, but two of them have kind of been made of glass their entire mm-hmm. their entire, you know. No way. disrespect, but that's just the way it's been. No, 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 no. I'm not talking shit on him at all. Yeah. I think Irvin. If I had to put a put a Guess on who my day one starter is. I think it's Irvin, unless mm-hmm. he's unless he's injured. But that's that's just me. Um, but you you you've got there, there's quite a bit of talent in here on the running back side of things. There's a kid out of Oregon State that's got a 95 rating, which I wouldn't be shocked if he doesn't wind up at Michigan State with his coach yeah. out there. Especially since Michigan Michigan State lost a guy, but he's a sophomore. You got a redshirt freshman out of Georgia. You got a redshirt freshman out of Miami. Both higher rated guys. Bigger body guys, because I think, like, just looking at a lot of the dudes that are in the transfer portal right now, they're undersized. The ones that are a, of a good size for what we want, there's a uh, Isaiah Augustov off of uh, Arkansas, another freshman. Guys like that that you can say, hey, you're already a big enough body. You can come in and, and be a third, fourth string guy, uh, an injury backup kind of guy this year, but you're going to get in our system. You've got a future. 
I could see that more happening with, with the running back room than probably anything else. Now, just, and I'm not shitting on any of those guys that you said, but I'm just going to go with the first guy you said, that Penny Boone guy from Louisville. I just happened to, I was just looking up his stats. Uh, I love the fact that he's 6'1", 240. I love that size. I love yeah. the bigger back, yeah. all those things. But just with what I talked about with the Bud Elliott, as far as moving to schools, he has, he has played for three schools in the last three years. He, played, he started at Maryland, then Toledo, then Louisville. Jesus. And now he's back in the transfer portal. So, mm, like, maybe. That's crazy. Like, the, it's just, it doesn't mean a That's no. Crazy. It doesn't mean a no, but it's just something that you might want to look into as, and rule would yeah. if, if that was the scenario. Obviously. But that's that's one of those situations that kind of puts the pause on me. Like, yeah. Initially looking at it, yeah, great. But then it's like, whoa, why are you moving around all the time? So it's pretty wild. I'm excited about next week and seeing what the spring game has to has to offer. And we're gonna get a spring preview out next week, and uh, probably recap the spring game the following week if we can. And then we're gonna get into some extra fun stuff that we've been working on a, a, a top fifty list. I know you've got some other guys working on it too yep. that watch the show and. We'll, we'll do a little more announcements for that coming up, but some exciting stuff for the offseason the rest of the way. And this may be the most unbelievable night in Pornester football history. 